Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Steelcast Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ronak Jain from Orient Capital, their investor relations partner. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Jain. Thank you, Michelle. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Steelcast Limited. Today on this call, we have Mr. Chetan Tamboli, Chairman and Managing Director, along with Mr. Subhash Sharma, Executive Director and Chief Financial Officer. and mr umesh bhat company secretary uh, this call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs opinions and expectations as of today actual results may differ materially these statements are not guarantees of future performance and involve unforeseen risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict a detailed safe harbor statement is given on page number 2 of the investor presentation of the company which has been uploaded on stock exchange and the company's website as well with this i now hand over the call to mr chetan tamboli sir for his opening remarks over to you sir uh thank you very much uh a very good evening to everyone on this call and on behalf of steelcast limited a very warm welcome for this q1 fy24 earnings call of our company I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the investor presentation, which has been uploaded on the stock exchange yesterday. We concluded our uh, annual general meeting yesterday and are pleased to announce the appointment of Rushil Tamboli as the full-time director of the company. Mr. Rushil has a long-standing association since 2011 with the company and has made significant contributions to its growth. He will play a crucial role in implementing the succession planning strategy. for managing the day to day affairs of the company in q1 fy24 due to geopolitical conditions high interest rates and elevated inflation rates across the globe our year on year revenue growth has been moderate and on a like to like basis performance on a quarter on quarter basis our ebitda and pet margin stand at 27% and 17% respectively making the highest figures in our company's history This achievement can be attributed to several factors, including cost savings in power expenses, reduced input costs, improved customer pricing, and improved operating margin efficiencies. We acknowledge the successful execution of the restaurant plans that were announced two years ago. These plans are now fully in place and are being implemented efficiently to further enhance operating efficiencies. The global environment is currently undergoing a structural shift. with major global economies increasing their infrastructure spending additionally a global manufacturing shift has begun moving away from china silka is well positioned to capitalize on these changes leveraging its key strengths such as unique business model technology and r&d capabilities together with this we also have locational advantages manufacturing prowess global footprint and market customers Speaking about the financial perform- performance of the first quarter FY24, we achieved a revenue of 119.5 crores, refle- reflecting a year-on-year increase of 3.3 percent. Our EBITDA saw substantial growth, reaching rupees 32.3 crores, an impressive increase of 34 percent year-on-year basis. Notably, we have achieved an all-time high EBITDA margin of 27 percent. significantly surpassing our target at ebitda range of 2022 likewise our profit after tax exhibited strong growth expanding by 43.4 percent year on year basis to reach rupees 20 crores resulting in a pet margin of 17 percent in q1 fy24 the domestic revenue experienced significant growth of 32 percent year on year underscoring robust demand with local market Domestic and export share of revenue is 52 and 48 percent respectively. 
addressing our rationalizing plants as we previously mentioned we have successfully commissioned a 5 megawatt solar power plant for captive use effective from 30th march 2023 the benefits of this implementation have commenced occurring from 1st april 2023 furthermore we are pleased to announce the commissioning of a hybrid power plant which had experienced delays due to government regulatory issues it has now been commissioned on july 8 Both of these plants are projected to yield annual power cost savings in the range of rupees 10 to 11 crores, with solar power plant already delivering the benefits. As you are aware, the company has entered into long-term supply agreement with a prominent OEM in USA, specializing in the railroad industry. Providing an update on this, the inspection phase was successfully concluded in November 22, while an initial projection in April of 10. necessary certification by february 23 the company ultimately received the certificate in may 23 as of october 23 the company is set to commence the supply of products to the railroad industry in north america a decade back we were very much focused only on one industry that is mining currently our order book is well diversified across different industries with railways gaining traction we visualize softness for coming to quarter which is q2 and q3 at this point of time maybe things improve faster a little later in the year however we also foresee many positives which will further improve our operational performance like improvement in margins due to savings in power costs reduction in manufacturing costs higher productivity and better operating efficiency so with this uh, i want to thank all of you having attending this call and we can now open the floor for questions and answers thank you thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Sania Mehta from Manibi Investment Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. So, uh, could you give me an insight about the capacity utilization this quarter? Hello. Yeah. Uh, please hold on. Uh, this quarter we did uh, 52 percent uh, utilization. Okay, and uh, my second question would be: uh, Can you give me an insight about the global tiers? Like uh, the global market you mentioned is about four lakh tons per year, and out of that, how much percent share does uh, China have, and how much percent share do other countries also have? Uh, Madam, uh, uh, your voice is very faint. Uh, I missed half of your question. Can you speak a little louder, please? Uh, yes. So, uh, an insight about the global peers. So, as it was mentioned in the last phone call, that the global market is around four lakh tons per year. So, out of that, how much percent share did China have, and how, what was the share of other countries? Uh, I think the uh, the dominant share uh, in the railroad industry in North America. is uh, being catered by china i believe it could be anywhere from 75 to 80% uh, uh india may be a minuscule number of 1 to 2% i'm not very sure and uh, the other countries which may be catering to north america would be uh, which would be brazil uh, some east european countries uh will be catering but we don't have exact numbers country wise uh, who supplies how much but obviously the dominant share will be 70 by 80% will be china okay uh, my next question would be like uh, in the previous con call it was mentioned that there will be a modular expansion of around uh, 10000 tons but currently there's still a lot of scope for utilization of the existing capacity so why are we even aiming for that modular expansion so uh, so this is a, this was a statement of intent by us 
that whenever we whenever we trigger uh, capacity expansion we will do it on modular basis in multiples of maybe 5000 tons each uh, but this is as and when we see uh, uh, an appropriate time to do it obviously it we could be few quarters away from triggering the capacity expansion uh, because if you are operating at about 52% uh, maybe we would need as we move now, we would need somewhere uh, 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 additional capacities in 2027. 20, so, if you uh, the throughput time to create new capacities about two years time. So, maybe towards uh, mid 24, uh, maybe we would trigger that. You know, so that and to do it on a modular basis is. Uh, to make sure that we we don't uh, we don't have you know too much of excess capacities going forward, uh, so that was the reason of uh, you know doing it in a modular way. Okay, yeah, yeah. and uh, the, also my next question would be as you mentioned about uh, the raw materials that were procured at uh, lower prices. So that we're using as a benefit for the customers, or are we looking at uh, improving the gross margins? We, uh, like in our business model, uh, we have a sales price uh, mechanism formula, uh, which is uh, implemented every quarter. If input prices go up, we would get a sales price increase with a lag of one quarter. If the input prices go down, we would have a benefit of this lower input cost with a lag of one quarter. So, and uh, so we don't have any mechanism where we would pass on the benefit, you know, voluntarily to customers. You know, this, these are set formulas and we work on uh, this mechanism every quarter. So, during the first quarter, we saw an input price uh, reduction. So the sales price got corrected effective first July. Okay. And my last question would be any update on the new sectors that we're aiming to enter or any new customers that our company has gained? Uh, yes, during the quarter uh, we did have uh, addition of two more customers, but due to confidentiality reasons, uh, we don't want to disclose the names of the customer. Uh, uh, but yes, uh, we have been added, and uh, our focus our focus on uh, uh, newer industries, which is uh, which is defense, uh, uh, railways, and ground engaging tools. Now, um, obviously, uh, the, the customer we got uh, during the quarter was in the railroad industry. I'm sorry, I'm not able to share the name. Uh, the second, uh, the future growth driver will be defense. Uh, we have been making uh, track systems for uh, combat vehicles. And uh, the first uh, consignment which was shipped, uh, some months ago, we got a formal approval yesterday. So, we will have a repeat order of five more track systems to be given uh, by March 24. So, so defense also, we are moving forward. Railways, as I said earlier, uh, we are moving forward. And another area is ground engaging tools. We are in discussions with uh, two world majors uh, for uh, doing substantial business in this area. But hopefully we will know maybe in the coming two quarters. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Rohit from Samatwa Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question would be on the uh, 
global competitor landscape so in the past you have indicated that you know compared to european players we have around 25% they are lower cost so currently whatever is happening globally so are we seeing any benefit that actually accruing to us compared to our peers globally are you saying that are we benefiting uh, uh, i have been understand your question so so cost wise in the past you had said that we are compared to the european peers competitors we have a cost advantage right around about 25 20 25% we are much cheaper than them if i'm not mistaken so uh, like considering you know higher gas cost in europe whatever is happening are we seeing any advantage because of that in terms of increasing our market share or any opportunities from that front uh see on the cost front uh, uh we continue to be competitive a b we are we are continuously also uh, 20 25% lower than our global peers uh, and uh, in terms of uh, the gas pricing now gas pricing worldwide have been uh, you know consistent obviously in the last one one quarter the gas prices have softened also but uh, our apparent advantage of uh, lower cost that continues Oh, oh, that's fine, sir. So my second question would be on the um, on the base business. So, like in the last two three years, we have we have entered into newer segments. So, if you could give me the growth that we have seen from our existing base business and from the new segments that we have entered to in the last two to three years, so any in on the growth aspect that we have seen. Uh, there have been growth. Uh, uh, you know in the base segments also and also in the newer segments also as the base of newer segment uh, you know is quite lower because we just entered 2 years ago the growth looks uh, apparently very very high in the newer segment but both put together uh, we are seeing growth in all the industry segments which we are catering like mining or towing locomotives transport construction railways ground engineering tools cement steel and defense so we are seeing of course uh, the big lock cost vary from industry to industry and customer to customer but uh, if we bunch all this together we are we have seen growth over the past two years and there will be growth you know as we move forward in the coming 3 to 4 years got it okay so my last question uh, uh, my last question would be on the uh, the so in the previous call you had mentioned you know three revenue drivers one was the defense segment one was the railroading segment and one was the replacement market so i just want to know on the replacement market so how are we you know uh, we have still a very small share so i remember you saying you want to reach around 10% in the next 3 to 4 years so how are we planning to build on that segment going forward and in terms of margins are they like much higher than what you are exactly doing right now or you could give me some picture on that yeah uh, the the replacement market is obviously ground engaging tools industry and uh, i just said the few minutes ago that we have been talking to uh, two world leaders uh, on the ground engaging tool market and hopefully in the next either in q2 or q3 we would have uh, some visibility on the ground engaging tools and obviously the uh, the other industry which we are focusing for the future which is going to be the future drivers of steel cars will be the north american railroad industry and defense and as i said little while ago we made track systems for combat vehicles for uh, for the indian army and we just got an approval yesterday and we have got a repeat order of five more uh, track systems which we are supposed to supply by uh march 24 so so things are moving in defense also obviously but at a slower pace uh and uh, uh, the north american railroad industry also is moving as planned so maybe we'll have more visibility in all these areas in the coming two quarters but 
as of now i can say we are on track and we will we will do uh, at least 10% in railroad and at least 6 to 7% in ground engaging goods over the next two and a half three years time got it sir so my last question uh, on the capacity utilization so for the year are we projecting around similar level between 50 to 65% uh, will that be a fair assumption yeah with uh, you know with the global uncertainties and uh, uh the softness which you have seen in the first quarter and maybe uh further softening in the q2 and q3 we should uh, you know end up around 50 around 50% utilization by the end of the current financial year great sir thank you so much and wishing you all the very best thank you thank you thank you thank you we'll take the next question from the line of chintan chheda from quest investment advisors private limited please go ahead yeah hi good evening uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats for excellent set of profitability numbers uh, sir my first question is related to our capacity utilization but now when i look at your capacities we have one old unit of 12000 tons and second is of the new unit of 18000 tons So can you just share what would be the utilization levels in this individual unit? Uh, you know, it be you know confusing for the for the investor community to you know really go into our different fly plant wise capacity utilization. You would rather work uh, or evaluate on the basis of. Uh, you know the overall utilization but obviously we do have plant wise you know utilization uh yeah agreed but then your new unit would be more efficient and would throw better uh, margins will that be correct understanding uh the new unit is a completely automated uh, loop line and compared to uh, the older plant which is what we call it is semi automated so the productivities are better but yeah uh, it also depends on where we place products whether we place in the old plant or the new plant depending on the volumes of each part we do so okay. if the utilization is less in the automated plant the question generally is that why can't we do more but then once we try to do more if uh, the if if the parts are not with high volumes then it becomes only economical to on the automated line so so our engineering uh, department you know evaluates this what should go where and uh, and then uh, you know take this forward there so so i would recommend it's better to work on the overall utilization rather than plant wide okay got that got that sir uh, and second is that uh, can you share what would be your current order book with the break up of domestic and export numbers the uh, the current year overall uh, export and uh, domestic put together is close to about uh, 105 crores uh, effective uh, 1st july yeah. and uh, as as months go by the orders are replaced you know replenish so by and large we'll have about 105 110 crores of order book at any point of time okay and uh, domestic and export break up uh, i don't have it uh, off and uh, right in front of me but uh, on a safely basis see if our exports in domestic you know fluctuates around uh, 55 45% so yeah. this should be in the same level but if you really want to know exact numbers i suggest you drop us an email and we'll respond yeah sure sure on that and sir on this uh, railways that uh, we are targeting so currently what would be the uh, size of our uh, share of revenue from railways or order book can you share some uh, more details about it i think as of now currently out of the order book of 105 110 crores we would hardly have you know 1 or 2% because the serial supplies are going to start from october so maybe a month before october we would have uh, uh, you know reasonable size and which gets which keeps on getting replenished as we move forward 
Okay, okay, got it. And sir, last question on the margin side. So this time we had a cost savings to our only from the solar plant, correct? And not from the hybrid one, right? Uh, so, so when I look at your uh, volumes, bio y in Q1 they look to be almost similar, around 4,000 tons, and our revenue is also similar, but the EBITDA increases around 8 crores on an absolute basis. And our assumption is that ki the solar cost power things would be around 1 to 1.5 crores. So the incremental 6 crore, 7 crore additional EBITDA that we are getting, so how much of that would be sustainable in nature? See, uh, in the first quarter, uh, there were a bunch of reasons all put together, uh, like uh, lower input cost, saving in power costs, uh, better better productivity, reduction in cost, you know, manufacturing cost. So, um, as we go along the year, uh, uh, this different. Uh, a reduction in cost uh, would keep varying. You know? For example, the hybrid, the hybrid power plant which was commissioned on July 8th, I said earlier, yeah, uh, those savings haven't started coming in. You know, coming in because of uh, the regulatory issues, but we are hopeful that within uh, the next one or two weeks, we should all have, you know, from retrospective day from July 8th. So, Correct. So by and large, uh, uh, we should have the year with uh, a good sustainable EBITDA margin. And as I've already always said, that up, we met 20, 22% EBITDA, and then end up getting you know two, three more percentage to various uh, efforts which have been put by our manufacturing team. So that that should continue, you know, as we move forward. Okay, okay. Got it, sir. Thank you very much for Thank you. and all Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Rajesh Jain from NB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations on a very good set of numbers. Sir, my first question is, uh, when you say 50 to 50 percent, 52 percent capacity utilization, uh, do we have to take the total capacity as 30,000 or, you know, the 27,000? Uh, uh, now, you know, these numbers may keep varying by about 1,000 tons year or there, but so year on year, uh, depend, depending on product mix, the number will be sometimes 29 or sometimes 30,000. Like currently, whatever we are producing, and the product mix, what we have, uh, the capacity can be called as 29,000 tons. Ah, so, so, so that means, uh, why I was asking this question is, uh, we had done only 3 to 4 percent growth in the top line. So, I just wanted to know, uh, there was a reduction in the raw material prices also. Right. So in, in terms of the volume, uh, did we had any growth growth during the quarter? See, uh, the increase in sale was just a moderate uh, three to three and a half percent, but we benefited from uh, uh, various factors which I which I talked earlier uh, on better operation performance, uh, savings in power cost, reduction in manufacturing cost, uh, higher productivity, and better operating efficiency. So. In spite of a moderate growth, uh, our fat margins are better, and obviously EBITDA is also touched 27 percent. So this is all happening because of these various factors. No, sir. What I was trying to ask you is, in terms of volume, was there any growth during the quarter? I'm not asking about the margins. Hello. I think it's more, more of the volumes are more or less same. Same. Okay. Now, why I was asking this, you now you have given a soft demand during Q2 and Q3. Uh, will we still maintain the same volume uh, for the next two quarters also? No, there will be the drop in volumes uh, uh, in Q2 and Q3, 
but uh, with better operating performance as we move forward uh, we we will try and aim and protect uh, the bottom line yes yes uh, sir uh, the, the second is about this uh, you know ebitda margin only uh, little bit dwelling on the the power cost if you see during the quarter the, the saving in the power cost is more than 3 and half crores hello yeah go ahead yeah so it's more than 3 and half crores so what i want to know is since only one of the solar plants was commissioned and you had just mentioned that uh, we should get around 10 to 11 crores of saving during the year so uh, i just want to know whether this entire 3 and half crores saving that we have seen in the power and fuel is purely from the due to the solar or is it due to any other factors also no see the uh, the power fuel and water they are all bunched together and that's where you are seeing you know reduction correct now there have been uh, reduction in uh, the natural gas price and the lpg prices also you know during the quarter okay so so but the saving what is accrued is from the our captive solar plant ha huh. the other reduction were because of the reduction in gas prices so what i was trying to figure find out is uh, this power saving of power cost would not be more than 10 or 11 crores that is what you have mentioned for the year absolutely i just said that uh, both both power plant for the hybrid one and solar will have an annual saving of 10 11 crores so the, why was it yeah. okay okay because this year itself this quarter itself it was 3 i thought it could be more than 12 to 15 crores once this no no, no no but because we are because the 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 power is together you know the fuel is also there as, as per the okay okay but this is corporate or corporate of its format so there has been reduction in gas prices and that's why it looks lower no okay fair enough so my next question is about the employees you had mentioned in the call that you know gujarat government had revised the minimum labor um, you know salaries and that would also hit us so, so just wanted to know ki uh, during the quarter we have uh, you know 10 crores of employee cost so shall we take this as the uh the every quarter uh, this is the cost uh, for the company absolutely uh, whatever effect which has come uh, uh, in the month of uh, i mean for the effective first april the uh-huh. increase in minimum wages and obviously the annual increments of all employees are also done effective first april so all of that is big factor in so in spite of steep uh-huh. increase correct uh, uh, the the increase in cost in employee expenses is very very marginal and that's because of uh, higher productivities and uh, uh, other rationalization measures which have been uh, used by us so in spite of the again in spite of the steep increases our increase is very very moderate okay so now in the subsequent quarters if the volumes are not that much let's say even it is a, you know flatish type of growth you will able to maintain these type of margins uh our team will strive to to you know to protect the bottom line uh, to the best possible extent and uh, uh i see no reason to you know to show better operational you know better operational performance in spite of softening of volumes okay okay sir thank you very much and wish you all the best thank you thank you thank you we'll take the next question from the line of smith shah from munar network capital limited please go ahead hi sir firstly congratulations on good set of profitability numbers my question is regarding can you please quantify the volume of orders with the american rail road and defense this year and next year if you can quantify uh, uh what we have to ship by march uh, as i said uh, will be you know about maybe 3 crores uh, not a big number we don't have visibility for defense in the next financial year 
And what's the other thing you asked? The railways. So the serial supplies of railways will happen uh, hopefully from October onwards. So we should start seeing orders uh, coming uh, maybe towards the end of the month or beginning of September. But as of now, we'll be again a minuscule number of uh, uh, number of maybe one and a half two crores. So do you mean uh, American railroads is to deliver uh, approximately three crore by March 24, right? Again? The American railroad figure by March 24 is 3 crore is what you said, right? No, I said the order book as of now. That's what you asked me. Yeah. But as 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 we move in the year, the orders will come. Okay, sir. Got it. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshan Zaveri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, good evening sir and thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, so firstly, congratulations on a great set of results. Uh, thank you. So sir, uh, I just wanted to ask, maybe this year we are looking for a flat kind of year, but maybe in, uh, how would our capacity utilization progress maybe over a period of next two years or something, you know? Could we have some kind of flavor, what do you think the environment will be? Maybe this is the year of consolidation and, you know, we might have a big jump in the next year that might be able to take, that might be, you know, get us two years of growth together. Will that be possible or how do you see going forward? Maybe, you know, what, what FY25, some target that you could have? Uh, the current year will be around 50. Uh, FY25, we are targeting to get to 60. And uh, uh, FY26, we are targeting to be around 75%. So, so this is some some little visibility we have on the utilization level. Uh, so so that means we might be able to see twenty percent growth in revenue approximately if I calculated as per capacity utilization. If you can put all these numbers and work work out the compounded annual growth rate, whatever that number comes should happen. Okay okay perfect sir. and sir with. Uh, answer with regards to margin, as you said, we'll try our best to protect them. But as we increase our capacity utilization, is there a chance for that we could even get a higher operating leverage, or how would that work out? Or do you think that right now the le the margin that we are at are like are are the best that we can probably do for the next one two years? Uh, as I said, uh, you know, a number of times that. Our pricing strategy aims at 20, 22% EBITDA margin. And then we try and get away another few percentage points, three, four, from various other cost reduction measures. Uh, I would be satisfied uh, if I were in your place with the, with the present number. And uh, moment we try and have more margins, you know, Maybe a company would get an advantage for a very, very short time, but then the competition will set in. So I would be happy with the current EBITDA margins are, you know, sustained and, and we don't plan to increase any. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So that helps me a lot. So and one last question. Uh, so what kind of, you know, maybe a roadblock that you could see for us going for, maybe a risk that, you know, you envisage that can, you know, maybe hamper us a bit, something that, you know, you could help us out with, looking at the industry currently. Uh, whatever visibility we have, uh, and obviously the, the geopolitics situation we are in, uh, So this uh, this global uncertainties will continue. We have to work through all these uncertainties and achieve the best we can. But uh, if I really see the 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 macro environment worldwide, uh, these uh, uncertainties will continue. You know, they may they not go away. So whatever so whatever you read from the various economists across the world, my views are very similar. So, so with this uncertainty, we have to live with it and move forward. Okay, okay, perfect, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and so all the best of future. Yeah, thank you. thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Akshita Dev from Vivo Commercial. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for taking my question. Hi, congratulations for a good set of numbers, and thank you for thank taking you. my question. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, what was the volume done this quarter? Was it maintained at 4,000 per ton? Uh, 4,000 tons for this quarter? Volume this number. Yeah. It's about uh, 4,000 plus tons. Okay. Okay. Do you think that in Q3 and Q4, as you previously said, that you may be able to achieve 5,000 tons per quarter? You'll be able to achieve that? No. In fact, what I said was the Q2 and Q3 may be, you know, soft quarters. Okay. Uh, Okay, okay. The next question is, uh, have you working, what, what are your working capital days currently and for this quarter? You mean uh, the working capital use? Days, the cycle? In terms of number of days, uh, I think in March we achieved uh, 83 days. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, June, uh, and June end we haven't worked, uh, maybe we'll give you in the next earnings call, you know, what have we done in September? Okay, okay, not a problem. And uh, we were planning to pay off the debt completely this year. Have we paid any in this quarter? Uh, see, long-term debt we already paid some two years ago and uh, we were having short-term debt. I think if I remember correctly, my our March end short-term debt was about 24 crore. Right. And out of 24, I think we already paid uh, till 31st July about uh, 14 crores. So effective first August, we have 10 crores and we plan to repay this on or before 30th September. Okay, okay. That's so, good. So, effect, so effective first October, this company will be completely debt free. Okay. Okay. And my last question is, uh, in, so in terms of margin, the U.S. and Japan business have higher margins for the company? Uh, there will be a, a marginal difference between, uh, between countries, between industries, and between customers. But uh, overall, uh, as I said, we will aim we aim for 20-22% EBITDA margin and end up, you know, a little higher. Right. Okay. Thank you. That was from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, 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 hello everyone, uh, thank you very much to every one of you who have been on this call and uh, uh, thank you again from Steamcast and all of us here. Uh, look forward to talking to you again in the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you to Orient Capital uh, for facilitating this call and uh, uh, who are our uh, IR partners and uh, look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Steelcast Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.